which is basically this. Sounds like not a whole lot right now, but you can't believe how much you'll use it if you'll use it. Um, a little couple variations just to get you excited about this lick. That's my favorite little variation that I come with off of it that I use all the time. Um, I'm going to show you this in the key of G. Again, right here we're basically looking at the uh, D, G, and B string covered at the 12th fret. That's what I'm using basically as my home base, my point of reference. I'm not actually going to play that, but that's what shows you where your G chord is. And we're looking at that as our home base. Okay, to actually do this lick, you're going to be with your middle finger on the 14th fret of the G string, and we're going to bend up a whole step. Okay, the next note we're going to catch with our ring finger on the 15th fret of the high E string. So you've got... Okay, when we bend up that G string, we're going to let it ring as we hit the high E string. Okay, that's going to be the whole deal going on almost all this time, is we're going to keep letting all these notes ring on top of each other. Going back, hitting the G string that is already bent up. That's going to remain bent, and it's going to hurt like crazy while you're holding that up there. But you're going to hold that bend throughout pretty much this whole lick. Okay, so you've bent uh, up, bent the G up. Hit the high E. Hit the G again. The next note is going to be on the 12th fret on the E string with your first finger. G string again after that bit is still bent up. Now we're going to hit the 15th fret on the B string. So you're alternating picking between each of these notes. Okay, relief is in sight. We're going to release the G string. Release the hounds! No, we're releasing the G string. Okay, again, I promise, to, uh, promise you we're going to let all these ring. There's the sound we're looking for. Okay, so when you hit the G, bend it. The E string, that's the 15th. That's the 12th. Let that 12th note, let that 12th string, or I'm sorry, the 12th fret on that E string, let it ring. When we get to that 15th fret on the B string, we've got three strings all ringing at the same time. Okay, and while you release your bend, you still got all three strings that are ringing. Okay, now we're actually going to our home base. So you've got on the D string, 12th fret, hammer on 14th fret, pull off to the 12th fret again. Then we're just doing a 12th fret on the G string. Okay, when we release that G string, I am actually hitting a G note on the 12th fret on the G string. Slowly, one last time. Okay, that's very cool. I'll show you how to use these things. Here it is one more time at speed. If you want to make it very staccato and pinch them off. I use it that way more than anything. Uh, if you're doing a slow tune. Go for the ringy thing. If you're doing a chicken picking thing. There's a variation. Okay, check that again. One very 
creation. There's a whole bunch that you can discover within that. Do them however you wish, man. Make these things your own. The information's here. Just go in there. Try some variations. It'll work out for you. Have different songs. Just bring different things out of these licks every single night. So have fun with that one. Like I said, that's one of my favorites and one of my most used things. Play it in any key. Bring it down here to C. Okay. As you'll notice, I did not keep my fingers where they're supposed to be. They're still doing the same notes. But because of the uh, actual span of the frets, once you get way down here, it's cool. Do it however you want. Uh, let them off, but I'm still playing the exact same lick. So if I was to play a 1-4-5 using only that lick, there it is. Anyway, have fun with that one. It's, it's a keeper. <laughs>